Okay, so if you really know your algebra, you should be able to tell me the name of this theorem. Okay, so what we have here is a polynomial function. So this is f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 5. Now, what I'd like you to do is evaluate this function for 2. What is f of uh, 2 equal to? Now, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I want to show you the correct answer in just one second. But uh, again, let's go ahead and see how much algebra you know. Now, there is a theorem, okay, a specific theorem that has to deal with polynomials that allows us to evaluate this function. All right, so again, we're trying to find f of 2. And effectively, there's two different ways you can do this, right? So that is a clue. And if you know the name of this theorem, go ahead and put that into uh, the comment section as well. All right, so once again, we have f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 5. Let's take a look at what f of 2 is equal to. Well, f of 2 is equal to 31. Now, if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And the name of this theorem that I'm going to be talking about is called the remainder theorem. All right, so this is very, very critical. And you can evaluate this function right here using the remainder theorem. Or we can just plug in a 2 everywhere we see an X and do all this number crunching. So if you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it's possible that you have not yet studied this in algebra. This topic is like a second year algebra uh, topic, you know, in court, this would be covered in courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, and or Pre-Calculus. But uh, if you've never seen this before, stick around because this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and see how to uh, use the remainder theorem to evaluate a function. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this, and I'm only going to briefly highlight this because I don't want to turn this into a formal instruction. It would take a lot of time to do this. By the way, if you're at this level of math and you need help with this, uh, or if you're interested in learning this, well, check out like my Algebra 2 course, Pre-Calculus course, College Algebra course, whatever level you might want. I teach all of this theory of polynomials in there. But what we're going to be talking about is something called the Remainder Theorem. Remainder, wow, what is that? It sounds kind of like what we do in division, right? If I go 3, the uh, 7 divided by 3, yeah, actually, let me do this right here, right? So if I say, all right, 7 on uh, divided by 3, that's 2, right? 2 times 3 is 6. And what do I have? I have 1 left over. I have a remainder of 1. Are we talking about that kind of remainder? Yes, we are, okay? So we're talking about division. And when you divide, you can have a remainder. But here's the deal, we're not re, uh, dividing numbers, we're dividing polynomials. So again, big topic, but I'm only gonna teach you uh, this one little kind of portion of, of uh, polynomial division, and it's called the remainder theorem. And it's gonna use this little short shortcut technique called synthetic division. So I know a lot of you are like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, listen, you'll see the kind of setup here in a second. But um, anyways, uh, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's not beyond your ability to understand what's going on. All right, but let's just take a look at this remainder theorem. It says the remainder of, of a, a polynomial divided by x minus k is equal to f of k. All right, so this is what's going to allow us to evaluate this function in another way. This right here may not make any sense to you, but when you see it in action, I think it will make perfect sense to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. All right, so here is our problem. So here is our function, and we are evaluating this function for two. We're finding f of two. We do all this number crunching, and you get 31. So you can see the work here just in case uh, you had problems with that initial setup that I described earlier in the video. But f of two of this particular function is equal to 31. And this is going to be, right, the answer to evaluate this function for 2 is, again, 31. And it's going to be the same as doing this, all right? So what are we looking at right here? Well, this is uh, basically what we call synthetic division, okay? It is a shortcut uh, to polynomial division. 
So let me just back up here before I go, uh, go into this. If I have this polynomial, this function right here, now let me erase this because we have a nice polynomial. And let's say I want to divide this polynomial, okay, this polynomial by this polynomial, right? This is a polynomial and this is a polynomial. So here is a division problem. This divided by this. This is what we're talking about. This is polynomial division. This is a big topic, uh, again, at, at more advanced levels of mathematics. But a shortcut uh, that we can use when we have uh, polynomial division problems where we're dividing one polynomial by a polynomial, what we call a linear factor, something with just an x, not an x squared. So a nice little lovely little polynomial like this, we can use this other thing called synthetic division. All right, so I'm just going to show you this step here because I don't want to get too technical where some of you get uh, totally lost in this video. But let's just take a look at the procedure here. So you see these numbers, 4, negative 2, 1, 5. Just focus in on these numbers here, 4, negative 2, 1, 5. And I'm going to start simplifying these concepts right now. So don't, don't run away. Don't leave the video. Be like, okay, I'm totally lost, totally confused here, Mr. Uh, YouTube Math Man. You see these numbers right here, 4, negative 2. Now, what's in front of this x? There's really a 1 there, okay? Now, we're looking at the coefficients. So this polynomial is written in standard form, okay? Highest to lowest power. So we have x cubed, x squared, x, and then 5. Now, if we didn't have all the powers represented, we could just throw in a 0. So what we're going to be doing is using the coefficients, all right, of... Um, of these terms of this polynomial when it's written in standard form. So we have a 4, a negative 2, a 1, and a 5. All right, so this is just going to be a simple illustration of this little technique. So here we have 4, negative 2, 1, 5. So these are the coefficients of our function. Now, look here, I have a 2. I'm going to be dividing that polynomial by this 2 using this thing called synthetic division. Now this 2 is uh, representing this 2 here in this function, f of 2. I'm putting a 2 right here. So here is a setup. So or here is the setup to do this problem. So what you do is kind of draw this long L thing like so. And now I'm going to go ahead and explain how we get the answer. So here is how you do synthetic division. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, the problem that we're doing here is like an Algebra 2 or pre-calculus level problem. So if you need additional help at this level of mathematics, well, check out my Algebra 2 or my pre-calculus courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem. All right, so you see this number right here, 4. You're going to drop it down. You're going to put it right here, okay? All right, so hopefully you understand what's going on. So now what we're going to do is this. 2 times 4 is what? That's 8. So you put the answer to that multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8. You put it right here. Okay, 2 times 4 is 8. You put it right there. Now you're going to add down this column. Negative 2 plus 8 is what? It is 6, okay? So we're going to do this again. So 2 times 6 is what? It's 12. We'll put the answer right there. Then we're going to add down. 1 plus 12 is what? 13. We're going to do this again. 2 times 13 is what? The answer is 26. And then we're going to add down. 5 plus 26 is 31. And now we basically run out of numbers to work with. Okay, we're at the, uh, once we finish, we are done. So notice this last number here, you're going to put a little line. This is the remainder. Okay, this is the remainder of doing this problem. But let's look at this number, 31. Doesn't that look pretty familiar to you? Doesn't that look like uh, this f of 2 when we evaluated this function, we got the answer of 31? Well, this is 31 as well. Well, is it, does it mean that the, the, is it representing the same thing as evaluating this function for 2? It does, okay? This is the remainder theorem. Basically, it says the remainder, effectively, and I'm kind of paraphrasing uh, this when we do this synthetic division, the remainder is going to be the same as taking this number and evaluating that function by that number, okay? The answer will be the remainder. 
All right, so let's go ahead and just practice this again. All right, uh, just to make this extra clear, though, I wrote this down. The remainder theorem allows for another cool, awesome way to evaluate functions for values. So let's take a look at another example of this, though. So just to practice this setup, let's suppose I wanted to take this polynomial and divide it by another polynomial like this. So this is 2x squared minus uh, 3x plus 1, and we're going we're to divide it by x minus 5. So when you have what we call linear factors, nothing like x squared or x cubed, when it's just a power of x and a number like this, this is what we call a linear factor. And I'm kind of, you know, uh, being a paraphrase or just using loose language here so those you can understand. This is when we can use this particular little shortcut. All right, if I had an x squared or something like a larger polynomial, I could not use this cool little shortcut called synthetic division. All right, so let's go ahead and divide this polynomial by this polynomial. And uh, if you recall, let me go back up here, and maybe now we can understand this remainder theorem a little bit better. It says the remainder of a polynomial divided by x minus k. So in this case, it was uh, this problem that um, the second example I'm doing, it's x minus 5. All right, that's what I'm divided to. It's equal to f of k. So it's equal to f of, remember, it's minus k. So this is 5, right? That's x minus 5. That's the k. So this is going to be equal to f of 5. All right, if you're a little bit confused on this, um, you know, just stick with me. I think through the second example, you'll get a better sense of this. But again, uh, what we're doing is we're looking at another way to evaluate a function. Okay, so here is how we can use synthetic division. So when you have x minus a number, you're going to put that number right there. So x minus, it's not x plus. If I had x plus 5, I would have to, oh, I would have to think of this factor as x minus a minus 5. Okay, so I would be using a negative 5 right here. So it's always x minus something. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this now. X minus 5, so I'm going to use the 5. Okay, this is already set up for me right here. And now I'm going to use the coefficients again. This is written in highest to lowest power, x squared, x, and a number. So here's 2, negative 3, and 1. And I got my nice little L here. So let's go ahead and practice this procedure again. All right. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? The first thing is I'm going to drop that 2 down. So 2 goes right right here. Okay. Now, if you want to go ahead and practice the rest of this, you're like, okay, you kind of remember what to do. What's the next step? Well, after you drop this 2 down, it's going to be 5 times 2 is what? Well, the answer is 10. You're going to put that right there. Okay. So we're doing synthetic division. All right. So let's just kind of look at this right here. I kind of pre-wrote this. So 5 times 2 is 10. You put the answer uh, in the next column. Now you're going to add down. Negative 3 plus 10 is what? Positive 7. So now you're just going to go ahead and repeat. Okay, so here it is. We're going to have 5 times 7 is what? 35. So we're going to add down 1 plus 5 is 36. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, well, there's our remainder. It's 36. So it means that if we evaluate this function right here, okay, let's kind of erase this. Well, we'll just leave this in. If we take 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and let's um, call this the function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And I said, hey, find f of 5. Okay, or what, evaluate this function for 5, uh, find f of 5 of this particular function. It's the same thing as synthetically dividing by this number. Okay, so the answer is going to be right here. Uh, it's going to be 36. All right, so let's go ahead and just check this to make sure this works out. All right, so again, we have pol a polynomial division set up here. Let's go ahead and just express this as a function. f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And let's go ahead and evaluate this function for 5. It should be the same thing as synthetically dividing. But let's just go ahead and do it the most direct path. So we'll plug in 5 everywhere uh, there is an x. So what are, uh, what are we going to get here? So we're going to get uh, 5 squared. 5 squared is what? 25 times 2. That's 50. And then this would be 3 times 5, which of course is 15 plus that 1, 50 minus 15 plus 1 is 36. F of 5 
is equal to 36. And I'm pretty sure that's the same thing we got over here uh, with our remainder. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.